If you want to find out what's happening with the car industry and jobs being shipped overseas, watch this video. Look around the world and you see particular trends. Debt is up, tensions are high, and everything seems to be upside down. There is one persistent trend in recent years, and that has been to offshore manufacturing of the automotive industry. This was supposed to change for the US, but as of now, in early 2019, that hasn't happened. Along with that, we see increasing delinquencies for car loans, people can't pay their car bills, and that doesn't look good for the manufacturer for the near future. Will this continue? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to have our focus on what's happening with the car industry from China to the UK and the US as well. Let's begin with China. Car sales in China continued to decline in January after their first full year slump in more than two decades, adding to pressure on automakers who bet heavily on the market amid waning demand for cars from the US to Europe. This happens to be a global problem that we are seeing today, and all of these analysts, all of these companies, they are all seeing it as if their own country is all that there is in the world, and it doesn't work like that, particularly since financial crisis and of course back in the year 2000 there was an acceleration in these two events and ever since then we've seen this major globalization that has occurred wholesale passenger vehicle sales fell 17.7 percent year on year the biggest drop since the market began to contract in the middle of last year downward pressure is still there the government isn't adopting any stimulating policies to give the market a shot in the arm this is what they want. They don't want the actual resolution of the issue. They just want the stimulation. Oh, you're feeling tired after spending two days with no sleep? No, no, don't go to bed. Just have five shots of coffee. That's going to do the trick. No, that isn't. You need to sleep when it comes time. You have to get that proper solution. You can't rely on the stimulants all the time. The persistent slump leaves car makers with few places to go for sales growth. The markets in Europe and North America are shrinking as the increasing availability of ride hailing and car sharing services makes it less necessary to own a car. Think about everything with Uber and Lyft and car to go and everything like this becoming more and more mainstream. Look, we had taxi cabs before, but suddenly with these new ride sharing apps, suddenly so many people people in major cities in the core areas are not buying cars and of course that is a relatively small portion but that's growing every single year further into the article they have a chart that i wanted to show you as well as some more data Car sales in China continues to fall on economic slowdown and the trade issues. You could see this chart goes from June 2018 up until January 2019 and it's getting worse and worse and worse. The wholesale decline in January to 2 million units accelerated from 15.8% of a slump in December. For last year as a whole, the drop was 4%, the first decrease since the early 1990s. So we are seeing a major slowdown that is happening in China, but it's just one place. This happens to be a problem, not just because of the trade tensions, although that is one issue. There is a global economic slowdown that is not being depicted in the fake unemployment rates that we see, in the ridiculous inflation numbers that we are told about. In all of these statistics that are put in front of you in the mainstream media, it's never going to tell you the truth. Look, back in 2007, 2008, do you realize that it took them one full year to admit that the U.S. was officially in a recession? 12 months before they admitted it. Do you think they're going to do so this time promptly and ensure that you are aware of the day that it happens? No, of course not. They're going to tell you as long as they can into the future. That's the way it is. 
China's passenger vehicle sales year over year change looks to be declining here basically ever since the financial crisis. And this isn't good because China is supposed to be the engine of economic growth beyond any country imaginable. We see that they have purchased basically more of everything than any other country. It's crazy to see them being the number one consumer of vehicles, of cell phones, of industrial commodities, and the list goes on and on. And suddenly when they have a problem, that then has a snowball effect. In the United States today, people aren't paying their bills. I just did a video previous to this talking about the student loans and how much of a problem they are. Also, auto loans, which I covered just recently, happens to be an issue as well. These are the auto loans that are in serious delinquency, which is basically 90 days plus, broken down by age, and no matter where you look, the situation is bad. Yes, most people are paying their bills, but the point I'm trying to make is that a growing amount of people, a growing number of people are delinquent. And every time you have a delinquency, every time you have a default, then we have an issue for what's going on behind the scenes. All of that debt is collateralized and securitized. And if you see what happened during 2008, everything starts to unravel. The insurance companies start to fail. The credit default swaps start to engage. And you start to see this happening at such a rapid clip, they can't keep up. U.S. auto loan delinquency rates, can you believe this? A record 7 million Americans are more than 90 days late on their auto loan payments. You have to look at this and understand we are 10 years into a bull market and supposedly economic growth. Where is it? Why aren't people able to pay for their student loan? Why aren't people able to pay for their auto loans? We've had such prosperity throughout this time. I was told unemployment was at 4%. That means according to the official terms, that's called full employment. What do we have then when people aren't paying their bills? Well, quite simply, we've been told a lie. I could see people not going out and spending money in extravagant ways, buying things that they don't need, but it seems to me like paying your car bills is probably something that you would do prior to something that you didn't really need. But then again, that's me, perhaps that's not the real situation. These numbers right now are the highest level that they have been in the 19 years that the New York Fed has been tracking these statistics. So think about it. From back in 2000 up until today, the amount of debt that people have and the delinquencies on top of that is at a record high. That's not good. And while the numbers might be relatively small compared to how much debt there is overall, that really isn't the factor because you have to understand understand the way that debt works and based on the critical comments I saw previous to this in the video I had done, people who don't understand the severity of this situation are just uneducated. That's what it comes down to. Okay, my friends in the UK, I haven't forgot about you. Honda is set to announce the closure of its Swindon car plant in 2022 with the loss of about 3,500 jobs. So yet another manufacturing plant closing down and what will happen to these jobs? Who knows? I'm not sure what they're planning on doing. They always have some excuse that don't worry, we're going to take care of our people. Maybe that's the case. Generally, it's a lie. But regardless, I'm tired of seeing this type of information out there and we are consistently not being told the truth. Look, the car manufacturers, they're going to move overseas. Can we just give it up? Can we stop? being told these lies and accepting them as the truth of course they're gonna do that and they're gonna find every single possible way to ensure that they continue to profit and get bailed out when they fail that's the way this happens I don't agree with the way that they're allowed to get away with this type of deal but that's the way it is and we shouldn't believe that anything is gonna change we may not like it we may want to scream and yell at everybody involved 
evolved. However, to suggest it's changing is ridiculous. It's not. It hasn't. And here are more and more examples. Look at what happened in Canada. They are closing down shop. This is the way it works. Now, maybe something's going to change next year, maybe the year after, but right now it hasn't changed. Okay. Jobs are being shipped overseas. These are manufacturing jobs. These are good quality jobs that builds a strong middle class. And I have to tell you right now, don't expect more to come in, expect more to leave. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. I cover every aspect of the financial system. You definitely want to check that out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out more about the auto loan delinquencies, the student debt problems that we have today, check out these videos. I'll put them up on the screen. Just click on that and I'll see you over there.